This episode of Wizards of Wibbly Pod is brought to you by Daily Harvest. You know, so many New Year's, I start out with some restrictive diet that I can't possibly sustain, and diets always feel like I'm saying no to myself and my taste buds. But this year, I'm turning that no into a yes with making balanced, healthy changes with Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest takes the planning, prep, and cleanup out of cooking by delivering my favorite veggie and fruit-filled meals straight to my door. Say yes to healthy habits without the hassle with Daily Harvest. Go to dailyharvest.com slash wizards to get up to $65 off your first box plus free shipping for a limited time only. That's dailyharvest.com slash wizards for up to $65 off your first box plus free shipping. dailyharvest.com slash wizards. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod with I love Jen the, like, Stone. I gotta get ready and, and me. we're into it. And me, David Dello. Yeah. So nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. I'm still waking up, so ignore my like crusty crusts. Oh, what a nice cup oh. you have there. <laughs> What's I, that? I know we're pretty. A hat? No, it's a mug. Oh my god! <laughs> Cheers. You're fired. Cheers I love you, you, but get out of here. Uh, I know we're so cheesy with the merch, but it's fun. It's fun. You know what? My life is merch. I'm opening a cafe. You okay? Can I just say yeah. I love how like shamelessly you're just like I'm opening a cafe. Hat, shirt, mug. Like oh wait, you're I forgot that. Repping. What's that? A hat? A crazy funky <laughs> junky hat? Overslept? <laughs> Hair unsightly, trying to look like Karen Knightley. We've been there. We've done that. We see right you right through. <laughs> yeah, fuck in the hat. You were so close. Everybody loves I, when I say fuck. Why? I love because you say it with such emphasis on the syllab- syllable. Emphalalis. Uh, I, like I said, I'm a little crust to crust, so just ignore me. Well, today, guys, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you've still, after all these years, almost learned the what's that Wait a minute. Song. I could do it again. Nobody no, wants nobody, to say. I was actually, you know what happened, Jen? What happened? I was in my head thinking, and I wasn't going to say, we see right through your funky hat. You see it right I was going to say, we hat. see right through your fucking hat, <laughs> because everybody loves Jerry Russo. <laughs> Fuck, ass, balls, shit. Some people do and some people don't. We still get the people that are like, my delicate ass. Oh, no. Um, but I can't. We can't please everybody. I, anyway. Why did she become Southern when she was delicate? Because the, the delicate Southern bale, yeah. you know? Um, well, anyway. Listen, wait, wait. We're going to get into the wizards <laughs> and the episodes. But I want to just tell you real quick the mm-hmm. backstory is the why I. Yeah, please uh, do. You actually haven't told me this. The Bigfoot yeah. Cafe in Pine Mountain Club. Because my wife. Yulia painted a painting of herself when she was 10 and yeah. entered it into a contest. Yeah. She painted herself um, surrounded by flowers because she wanted to have a flower well, show. Well, she's a very floral person. She and I is. love it. She loves flowers. Yeah. She knows all about them. She's very creative. So it's not just a cafe that has grab and go sandwiches and stuff and food, but it's also like a shop. I know. So, I saw that. Like, And that's why I said to you, I was like, I can't wait to see the stuff she curates because Yulia has such great style. Like the way she's decorated y'all's house and like yeah. just the way she like styles herself. Like, she, so I can't wait to see what she curates she in that She knows store. what's up. I don't even have to uh, think anymore because she's no. doing it. No, your, style, your style has improved yes. like 20%. But so now she's doing flower, uh, flowers, dried flowers. They don't have that in, in Pine Mountain. So, yeah. um, and also our friend Amy uh, is doing her own handmade jewelry and our friend Bill had a book there, a bookstore yeah. and now it's bookstore. It's like all coming together. Uh, gifts and the, all this stuff and Bigfoot. Everybody, we have a life-size Bigfoot. and um, Yeah, you've got like a whole photo op where it's like a life-size Bigfoot yeah, that you can I, take a picture I have of. to say, I'm not sure if it's life-size because I haven't actually seen Bigfoot in you person. You haven't? No, I haven't. He di- you didn't get the rights to yeah. do your cafe? No. And there's and there's the, the Instagram that everybody can go check out. And uh, yeah, it's very well, exciting. What's the Instagram? The Bigfoot Cafe. Okay. I just want to make sure <laughs> I we have know. it. I don't, sometimes oh. there's an underscore. There's like a seven for some reason. Is it hot in here? I'm hot. No. That's because you're always fitzing. Oh. Do you want to get to the episode? The, It's the report card, right? I think it's just report card. A report but- card. <laughs> God, did you get a report card when you were, did you get nervous? I did. Wait, did you get like one, two, three, four or like A, B, D? Well, I mean, I think like the more you go through school, like when you're young, I think it's like one, two, three, four. Um, But- I mean, I only went to school until fifth grade and then I was homeschooled, but uh, we still got right. like report cards and stuff, but I was a nerd. Like I, yeah, I wasn't a different. nerd, but like I was, I liked school. I still like school. I still like learning. I still like, you know. And by the way, the nerd mm-hmm. word means you were independent, free thinking, out of the box, yeah. cool person. Well, look at 
it, I love that. You know I love what I mean? Spin on it, yeah. But but it, there, there but you used know how to be it is a, when you're in school, like it doesn't like go over as well or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I never had numbers. I'm old enough that we had grades. You yeah, know? we and did if too. I got a fucking C. I was like, yes. <laughs> Me and my dyslexia. You know. Okay, everybody. No, I I love that you were like having like whatever. You were what? you were saying like a really nice thing, and then we were having a nice conversation about grades and stuff like that. And then you're like, anyway. Uh, well. I maybe I didn't want to get into my That's grades. Fine. That's what it is. That's but fine. I, well, you've got a, a C, a solid C student, and an A plus student. Although I have to say, when I got to nursing school, I realized uh, it really messed with me at first because I was a straight A student my whole life. Yeah, and, you were. And um, in nursing school, C's get degrees. Like those tests are insanely hard. And like, did you say C's get degrees? That's yeah. That's the that's the in nursing school. I'm sure it is with other majors too. But like, there's a lot of uh, you just have to pass. Like you just have to pass. But like the first like semester or two, it was really messing with my brain because it's like learning a new language, yeah. right? Like, but but it, it's it's so much information overload that like everyone's like, you have to get over the fact that you're not going to make an A. Nobody makes an A. Like right. you're going to make Cs, and Bs if, you, if you're lucky and right. you'll still get, and nobody cares. Nobody and cares. if you do make an A, you have no social life whatsoever. It's true. It's yeah. very true. Okay, report card. So season one, episode 17, it first aired on June 29th, 2008, written by our lovely Gigi, Perry, and Peter, who y'all have all met. Who um, were, They were all on the show. Uh, yeah. Gigi and Perry wrote on Friends and mm -hmm. stuff. And it's very interesting because you can really feel them in this episode. Yeah. Because the way, you know, Alex's character is very kind of sarcastic mm -hmm. and kind of throwing well, that's a lot of asides. Yeah, yeah. A lot of asides were, were happening, you know. Um, and when I say aside, I mean, you know, kind of a throwaway. We're having a story. We're, we're having the plot go on. And then a little aside is like, oh, I was going to do that. But, I'm you know. Yeah. Um, okay. But I, I have to say, like, rewatching the show, I really love... And, and being older and like getting the different writing styles and voices, it's so cool because you can see like what's a Todd episode, what's a Gigi and Perry episode, right. what's a Peter episode, yeah. like what's a Ben and Vinny episode, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like our writing partners that would kind of spearhead that week's story, you can really see their voice and perspective. And like some of them leaned more towards like the like gross out humor and some of them leaned more towards like the, you know, more like romantic storylines right. or arcs or things like that. And of course like Disney, had their input of like, oh, we want a two-parter. They loved a two-parter. And um, also, though, even though Gigi and Perry, as we've watched their episode and got their information, mm -hmm. their names were on it, the whole writer's room, mm -hmm. and this is what the whole writer strike was well, about. Well, that's why I said, like, like they spearheaded it. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, and and for the people who don't know, the, the whole writer's room will throw out ideas and and participate up to the it. last but, moment yeah but everybody gets assigned like a specific you know there's 10 writers yeah and then like they'll get three and then the you know someone else will get one or whatever because it'll be too much to do 21 episodes for one person like eventually you're going to run out of ideas you're not your creative juices aren't going to be flowing right. you know and and it's it's not so much sitcom but but um who wrote uh better call Saul and um help everybody help uh, help uh, uh breaking bad Oh, a oh, Alan, Vince Gilligan. Vince Gilligan apparently yeah. writes all of the episodes himself is what that I That doesn't heard. surprise me. Interviews I've seen with like Vince Gilligan and stuff like that. Breaking Bad I love because I always respect when people have a clear perspective. And so he knew from start to finish what that show was going to be all the way through. Right. It wasn't like, sorry, but like a lost situation where like they what got the in there. What the fuck was going on with the polar bear? The polar bear? What about the freaking smoke monster? Where uh, was maybe, the smoke monster? Maybe I missed the smoke no, monster. No, it's right at the very beginning, and then they just abandon it entirely. Like, so like so that, I, I feel like Lost is like, I, I use it as an example because I feel like it's a perfect, perfect example of like, okay, we had a perspective, and then we didn't think the show was going to go this long, so we're just going to have random shit. What was yeah. the deal with the polar bear? Well, I don't know. It just, there was a polar bear. I Listen, On I watched- a Tropical Island? I liked, you know, my brother Michael did an episode of that. He played- Well, it was on for a thousand years. Uh, well, what was the the like it's the like guy who's very handsome with the blonde hair? I don't, I don't remember know. his name, but he had a storyline with yeah. with Michael. Um, and J.J. Abrams is the producer mm -hmm. who I went to high school with, and I did, did you his, really? Yeah. I, it, what his, is your life? I don't even your what life is, is my so... life. Everybody, <laughs> welcome to my life. Um, he. 
All right, Claire Danes, calm it down. <laughs> Why is that Claire Danes? My what? so-called life. Oh, right. Yeah. Back to the episode because yes. we're all over the place. Okay, so the overview is that Alex gets a bad report card on our wizard's test and unsuccessfully tries to hide it. So the episode starts out with you, Jerry, giving the kids a wizard's test and they have to turn a guinea pig into a dove. I know you just, we'll get to you being a guinea pig. I know you love it so much. Justin successfully changes his guinea pig into a dove. Alex turns her guinea pig into a brick. And Max turns his guinea pig into a dove who coughs snot. Yeah, Is that well, what it was? Well, because of the way he said this spell, he oh. said something a little wrong. He goes, I said snot or something. Yeah, you know? I remember that line. I What's interesting great. to me about this part of like season one is you start to slowly see them right to our strengths because they got to know us better, right towards the characters. They've starting, you can really see them starting to fully form these characters and bring them together a bit more. Right. We haven't fully found it, but like I feel like the beginning of season two will be interesting to get into because. Because yeah. you're going to see those really come into fruition. I I don't remember anything that I did in the first scene. I don't remember anything about the teaching, about the this and the. I, I just don't. But you did so much teaching. Yeah, that was I, like the beginning of every right, episode. I, was like, I feel which, like which spell is it? We're going to freeze time. Yeah, you know, like that was it was, it was interesting. Yeah. You know, and also David is so. Uh, David Henry, by the way, is who I'm talking mm -hmm. about. He is so, um, uh, uh, even Stevens. Uh, uh, yeah, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, so Shia there was LaBeouf a lot. There was a one. lot of Shia in the first season. Yeah. There was a lot of like David kind of, because also too, like I think Transformers had come out like somewhere around that time. And so I think he was really channeling yeah. that because that was what he wanted for his career, which makes sense. Yeah. And it, not that it's bad. It just is interesting. I mean, if you look at Heather's, Christian Slater's yeah. doing- uh, why do you, oh, I'm uh, I love. Christian Slater, but I'm Jack Nicholson. He just he, was he did, he did Jack Nicholson. Well, I mean, Selena did Rachel from Friends. Alex, right. if you if you watch, because she loved Friends, Friends, is, and she still loves yeah. it, but like it, it's, we used to call each other Rachel and Phoebe mm. um, because like my character was very Phoebe. Hers was Have very you met Rachel. Have any of them, the Friends? Um, yeah, I, I, I met Lisa, Lisa Kudrow at like some random premiere or something. I'm not the one, I don't like to go up to people and approach them unless, because I don't want to know. There's so many assholes in the business. Yeah, I don't want to know. I don't yeah. want, because it ruins their work. You can't enjoy it anymore. I don't want to know. There's enough dicks on the world in the world. <laughs> I've seen most of them at the hospital. Woo! Um, but, uh, but yeah, like, I just don't want to know. I don't yeah. want to know. So I, I saw her from afar. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I'm a, I'm a you know, I'm a voyeur, yeah. if you will. I don't I know if I want to say that. Uh, <laughs> Courtney Cox and Brentwood. Yeah. And I was on Jesse with Christina Applegate, the yeah. same producers, Brett Kaufman Crane. And I was like, I'm going to say something. And I went over and I was like, uh, hi, uh, me, David, oh, you, no. you with but friends, she was me on Jesse. Uh, <laughs> I was like, see, but this is also why I don't approach people because I just, my, my brain will go like, three like three steps ahead and so i'm just like <laughs> yeah but sometimes i mean look i was in, you know they were re-releasing the big chill and i was interviewing yeah. everybody coming in and i said kim uh, uh who was married to charlie sheen she was a housewife kim, who kim wasn't married to charlie sheen <laughs> This episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod is brought to you by Daily Harvest. You know, so many New Year's, I start out with some restrictive diet that I can't possibly sustain, and diets always feel like I'm saying no to myself and my taste buds. But this year, I'm turning that no into a yes with making balanced, healthy changes with Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest takes the planning, prep, and cleanup out of cooking by delivering my favorite veggie and fruit-filled meals straight to my door. It almost feels like delivery, but better for my body and my bank account. <laughs> One of my favorite meals from Daily Harvest is their Harvest Bowls. They are so delicious and perfect, just a great lunch to take to work. The quinoa and macroot lime Harvest Bowl, ugh, it certainly hits the spot, but especially in the middle of a hectic work day. With Daily Harvest, I know my meals are built from organic produce that doesn't have gluten, fillers, seed oils, added starches, and sugars, all those things that make my body inflamed and angry. Plus, by using recyclable and compostable packing when possible, Daily Harvest is not only helping you to eat clean, but helping keep the earth clean too. Say yes to healthy habits without the hassle with Daily Harvest. Go to dailyharvest.com slash wizards to get up to $65 off your first box plus free shipping for a limited time only. That's dailyharvest.com slash wizards for up to $65 off your first box plus free shipping. Dailyharvest.com slash wizards. Um, Starship Troopers. 
Oh, 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 oh. You're like testing yeah, my like. You know who I'm talking about. I do. Everybody. Denise Whatever. Richards. Denise Richards. So she's there coming to this premiere thing and I'm working for VH1. Yeah. Which used to be a pretend uh, I know MTV. VH1. Okay, I'm sorry, old too. For the other people. So I'm interviewing people and, and I'm talking to her. I said, have you seen yeah. the movie before? Are you excited? And she's like, yes. And this and that. And I go, are you hitting on me? Like as a joke. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, no. Oh. Of course not. She was like offended. So yeah, I was yeah. being silly. Now, Kevin Klein. <laughs> Where did the story the come from? Well, the people being nice. Oh, got I'm it. Okay, into sorry. It. So Kevin Klein. Yes. Who I He's love, lovely. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. He's there. I'm interviewing him and Jeff Goldblum, right? I mean, I mean I'm like, what kind of life do I have? Yeah, I know. Like, here. here, drop the one. And I'm like, hey, you know, what, what do you remember from this and this? And then he was like, just giving me one word answers and just being mean. You know, mm. like you can, you can be like, Hey, I don't want to do the carpet. I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. You know? Well, cause but, that's, I don't, anybody I want to be friends with, that's not their favorite part. Right. Cause I'm always a little weary of people that are like, I love attention and yeah, yeah. whatever. I don't know why they always sound so like that. I, I don't know if but, you've seen the big show, but there's an episode, there's a part of it where he's uh, jogging and he has really short shorts. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to fuck with him. I'm like, Hey, did you pick the short shorts where we saw everything? Or was that wardrobe? <laughs> so... Uh, I, I kind of got Kevin Costner back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Kevin Costner. No. Kevin Klein. Who? Kevin Klein. But Kevin Costner Don't piss off Kevin Costner. in the beginning of the big show. Dances with Wolves with you right out of here. I know, but. That was but such a he, stupid joke. He uh, was in that. Kevin Costner yeah. was in the beginning of the big chill. He's he the court. Cut. Yeah. He's the one who died. You yeah. only see his Picture. arms yeah. and stuff. But there was two scenes flashback and he got cut out. Mm -hmm. And then that's why he was in Silverado uh, uh, because he was great. But yeah. it was the same director, you know. Oh, uh, well, that's so. nice. The director kind of made good on that. Most right? directors are just like, sorry. Bye. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Back to the episode. So, um, the when the Russos uh, kids get their talking wizard report cards, Alex tries to hide the fact that she got a failing grade. Okay, I love the report card had a line that made me laugh a lot because she throws them in the trash, right? Mm -hmm. Like throughout the episode, she's trying to like get rid of it. Uh, she throws them in the trash and he screams, "I got kids to laminate!" And I don't know why that just like tickled me. I thought that was really funny. I can still see Jill too, like on set. Jill is yeah. one of our prop masters, right? Um, like but pulling can, the string to yeah, make it yeah, yeah. So like, talk. Like, so especially like in the kitchen of the substation that when he's like flapping his like mouth, yeah. I think. Come in. <laughs> it's the ghost. It's fine. We've invited them. Um, so Zach Baggins can come oh in. Oh my God, Zach. Um, is that, don't. Um, okay, so, but yeah, like seeing her with the string just like flapping his mouth like yeah. was I mean, really- they, they must have just CGI'd out the string, I guess. Or maybe I you guess. couldn't see it. No, it I think was it was so a clear, clear, I think it was a clear yeah. string. Um, um, I found it interesting and I love that Ian, it was nice to see Ian, what was Ian's last McKellen. name? McKellen. Yeah, yeah, he's passed away. I know. Uh, but he, he just warms so my wonderful. heart. He was so, he was such a big kid. Yeah. And like, if you go back and you look at his resume, like he was a part of like such cool projects Amazing, and like yeah. just, but yeah, he was such a big kid, always ready to play. Um, yeah. It, it just was so inspiring to see somebody jump into that environment and not miss a beat. Yeah. He was great. And it was wonderful to have him throughout the series. I mean, he was our Dumbledore basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I found it interesting that the wizard world sends the kids the report cards. Why don't they just send, send them it to, to the, the pa fucking parents? I know. Okay, that was a detail that I was like, uh, what? Yeah, it was weird because also too, like you have to get the parents to sign it and then it has to send it back. I'm like, then just cut out the middleman. Just yeah. send it to the parents. It was a strange detail that, I mean, we wouldn't have 22 minutes of this episode if they didn't right. <laughs> send it to the kids. I mean, it's it's very science fiction. Like, you create a problem that you can't solve, and yeah. then you go, oh, wait, we just do this. And we we'll solved solve it. it. Yeah. And tag. Um, so Alex attempts to destroy the report card in various ways, including throwing it away, pouring hot sauce on it, and eating it, uh, all of which are unsuccessful. When Jerry and Teresa become suspicious, Alex freaks out on the patio in a panic, which we didn't shoot on the patio that much, but turns them into a guinea pig and then lies. They went to the emergency sandwich shop convention. Which was so funny because um, the, the through line with Selena and David, it's interesting because they really did in this episode set up the dynamic between him yeah. wanting to be super cool a little geeky, like I said earlier, like a nerd is fun and independent. And him and Dan Benson, who played Zeke, you know, have their little yeah, uh, uh, yeah, together. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, and he also, his, 
His his trying to be cool was his face, and then his core was, oh my god, I'm a, I'm a geek. I, I love that. You know what I mean? That the like yeah. the stuff that Selena was lying to him about was uh, uh, it gave him pleasure. You know, kind what, of. Wait, what do you mean it gave him meaning, pleasure? Meaning she said. There's a, you know, a convention and he's like, oh, the convention. This is so, I love yeah. that. I want to go to that, you know, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or he, he, what did he say? He said, it was uh, like they got my paper on, on wheat or whatever. Yeah. It was, it was some kind of, it was a funny aside yeah. that she was lying about something, but he uh, it was, was into what she was. Yes, the exactly, lie. Okay. Exactly. I got you. I got you. Um, but I also feel like that was part of like Alex's like expertise is that she, knew she, he would get so excited he'd be distracted by any kind of like right. holes in her story. Right, right. But so while that happens, Justin invites his AP bio friends over to watch the new episode of Volcano Discovery and High Def. And I think this is the first time that we see the Vulcan, the, uh, uh, you yeah. know, that thing with David. Their, I can't do it. Their little secret handshake. Yeah, their secret handshake, which was just basically like the Vulcan hands yeah. and then doing the. Can you do that with the left hand? No, We're I can doing, only do it with one. Ah, I'm doing really it do with, with both one. for people who are just listening. Ah, I know. Oh, my I, hand I, hurts. I can do it, but it's so sad. It's so sad. Yeah, it's very sad. Anyway, um, I, yeah, I think it's the first time. Which we, they did that multiple times. Yeah. Um, And I always loved it. And I could never do the like, or whatever like, sound. I don't know what sound that's supposed and to be. And then you come and you crash the party. Well, of course, because I got to get, I gotta get it in with uh, Justin. Yeah. What's interesting <laughs> to me is you liked Justin yeah. Harper yeah. and then you also liked Zeke. So you were, I didn't like you Zeke were, at that time. Uh, okay, I was still all eyes were on Justin at yeah, that point. You were, um but it's like it's like life, right? Like you have crushes, especially in high school, you have crushes and then all of a sudden you don't see them that who way. Was your and then crush you start in high school. Well, I was homeschooled. When you were crushing on was, every was, single I was, I was crushing on everybody and then I and then I got over them very quickly. I'm trying to think if there was like one person that I crushed on consistently. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think it wasn't until like my first love, which was actually um, one of like David's friends, which he had a lot of friends, whatever. But like um, that was somebody that I like I crushed on for a long time. But that's yeah. first loves. That's different. You know what I mean? You know what's interesting? My <laughs> my oldest daughter went to college in New York, and the she had a crush on someone, mm -hmm. and it was it was like many a long time. She's like I really like this person yeah. for months and months and months and months yeah and then i went to visit her and we went out and she was like he was there and i said where she was you know did, did we talk to him there were so many people she's like ah, i'm not gonna talk to no, him dude it's honestly every relationship i've ever had it's because i didn't wasn't interested i was like intrigued by them but i didn't have a crush on them if i have a crush it's over because yeah. i'm gonna just take a shit on it. Like it just, that's a horrible turn of phrase, but like, it, it, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I don't know what to say. I fumble my, I fumble so hard. Like, I'm just not, I'm not good with it. I'm not well, a good Here's flirt. the thing. As someone who is 51 years old. you okay. I'm going to say to everybody out there who's maybe a little younger, if mm. you like someone, just tell them, just say, Hey, I like you. And then you, face you know? rejection. That's no, the worst. That's the what thing. we're all afraid of. Thing. It's, if you are getting rejected, it means that you're trying. If you're That's not true. doing that, because again, this was like a long time uh, of liking someone yeah. and then it not being, uh, uh, well, actually they did date for a little bit and okay. then she so ended she finally up made not liking him point. right away. And I was like, well, you wasted a year of time. You should have just jumped in, see if you like, it, and then you're out. Yeah. You know? what, what I don't like is this like, cause I'm, I'm from Texas. So it's kind of like old school, um, a little bit. And I can be a little old fashioned when it comes to like my dating style. But the fact that I feel like I can't, I know there's no rules now, but like, I feel like, I what the fuck ask. do you mean? There's no, no of course there's rules. No, but Consent I'm just saying, and, and well, no, 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 not like that. I'm not that. even thinking. I'm not even thinking that down uh, that line. But like, I, I'm thinking of like, you know, oh, the girls aren't supposed to ask the guy out first, or like, when did, the, oh, because this a Texas thing? It's it's probably a Texas like old school thing. But like, it's something where and and past like gender, you know, of like if you like somebody you know, you wait for them to read your mind and like you back. It's so stupid. <laughs> like, it's so dumb. But I find myself still being like, well, if he really likes me, he'll reach out. And if he doesn't, then I'm just wasting my time. Right. Like, I don't know. It's it's so stupid, like the social constructs we put ourselves in. I'm just in. saying, everybody, follow your passion. And if that's something that you're, if you're interested in something, just, or 
whatever, just go for it. Yeah. Right? No, I think that's excellent advice. And I've done that uh, many times and eaten shit many times. Okay, um, so anyway, so Harper works up the nerve to crash Justin's big party, tries to flirt using the hot topic of volcanoes that like gave me a we've already. I loved it when Dan's like, we've already talked about and volcanoes. And she's just like, okay, great. <laughs> um, I worked on that line all week. Um, so the party evolves into Max in a human-sized hamster ball racing the guinea pigs. Okay, us, yes. me and Maria in the guinea pig uh -huh. thing. Uh, uh, now, um, why do we not have our wherewithal? Do you know what I mean? Why am I not aware as a guinea pig mm -hmm. of what is going on? You know what I mean? Like we like run away and disappear. <laughs> why the fuck would we run away? Why wouldn't we just sit there and like try our best to let Justin know that he should turn his back into fucking human form? Can I just say, I, I agree. Cause like I said, so in other things, when you've had this whole thing where it's like you get turned into something else, like you, they like constantly like be beg or whatever, or like try to make, like get the attention of the person that can fix it, right? But I just, I love you so much because <laughs> the seriousness that you just asked, so why don't we have our wherewithal as guinea pigs? Well, like just go. the absurdity of it is so great. <laughs> uh, you let us know what you think. D should we have had our awareness as guinea pigs rather than just running away and, you know, and not. Yeah, because the guinea pigs, once they get turned into people, are still, like, thinking like guinea pigs. Creepy. So you would be thinking, really yeah. creepy. Yeah. We'll get there, we'll get there. Okay, okay, okay. So during the race, the guinea pigs' ball breaks open and the guinea pigs slash parents, you guys, a Um Professor Crumbs comes to investigate why Alex has not turned in her uh, report card and demands to speak to her parents immediately, which is why... You would not give it to the children. Because we are gone. Because we are gone, gone guinea pigs. <laughs> but Alex discovers our guinea pigs slash parents are gone. So when the report card rears its ugly head once again, Professor Crumbs finds out that Alex lied about her report card and about her parents being at the emergency sandwich convention, which why we didn't know immediately upon the words emergency sandwich convention that that was a lie. Yeah, but it's so funny. Yeah. But Crumbs suspends Alex's powers for irresponsibility. No, he, he doesn't. Yeah, I guess he says suspend, yeah, but he suspended. takes her powers yeah. into a very, sorry, Justin and special effects people and everybody. <laughs> no, Justin was practical with special effects, right? Yeah. But it, it was looks cheesy. so silly. Yeah. And there's a point where- And so he, serious. Yeah, it's like too. in his hand, the, you know, the, the, this, this sphere, this, this kind of like whatever you make the powers look like. Mm -hmm. And there's a point where he puts them kind of in his pocket in the robe. But yeah. they didn't show you that because it would have looked little, really little, weird. Well, because anytime you take like this, you know, digital thing, at least at the time and with the budget we had, and then try to mix it with some sort of like actual practical fabric yeah. or whatever, it just didn't right. didn't move right. But yeah, it's I true. thought that too. It reminded me of those, like at Spencer's Gifts, those things, I'm aging myself right now, but the the little electrical ball you'd put your finger on and oh it would yeah like, yeah it's like a it's it's a electricity inside yeah. and then when you move your finger it goes with yeah that's thing. what it reminded I loved me of that. That right was they were and, so fun and then they got hot for yeah, some reason that was like lava lamp just, like, time yeah did was, you have a lava lamp yeah Ugh, my mom bought me another one my, I love my mom but she buys me weird gifts for Christmas sometimes she'll like see it somewhere and be like Jen would like this and oh. I'm like why do I need a lava okay well lamp? tell your mom I like weird gifts that she okay. should just send them to me also you're gonna get a lot of snarky t-shirts when i had that that ball thing in the lava lamp i also yep. had something that you would plug into your stereo okay. and it was a spinning disc and then it would display the music in different mm. kind of um ways now this disc thing that's that goes you can c kind of do computer animation on it now yeah. you know but it reminds I, me of like, like the LED that. lights behind the Listen, TV. Listen, I was high as fuck in high school <laughs> and I was really enjoying well, I think the watching C the music. I think the C's make more <laughs> sense now. <laughs> um, okay, so Alex, in trying to get her parents back, tells Justin and Max that she turned their parents into guinea pigs. They reveal to her that they lost their parents and these guinea pigs are replacements from the pet store. So she thinks that they're she's going to get her parents, turn them back, but they're actually just rando guinea pigs. So Justin turns the pet store guinea pigs into humans to help them find their parents. And God, was that makeup creepy as hell. Yeah, it was weird. It I, freaked me out at the time. It freaked me out rewatching yeah, it. Yeah, I did remember that. Now, wait a minute, Jennifer Stone. Yes, David Ellis. What Deluise. is your middle name? You don't know? No. It starts with an L. You're going to have to guess. Shit. Jennifer Love Stone. <laughs> no. Lucy Stone. No. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll just go through all the L names. No, please don't. I, I'm sorry that I don't know that. I, feel Why, I don't. Yeah, you're fine. It's uh, Lindsay. 
Lindsay's, Lindsay. my middle name. Do you not like that? My name is so vanilla. Like my parents literally just, I almost was, I think we've talked about this before um, and everybody's just gonna go <laughs> if we have, but um, but my parents were big Dynasty fans. Ah. And so they almost named me Fallon, which what a bad ass name that would have been. Fallon Stone, mm -hmm. like, come on. But my grandparents intervened and like, that's weird. She's gonna get made fun of. Little did they know I was gonna be weird anyway. Uh, and get made fun of. So, and who was the what character? Who was that on Dynasty? I don't know, I've never seen an episode of Dynasty. In so, my if life, you got in so trouble, was it Jennifer Lindsay? Of course. God, it's so funny, isn't that interesting? How if you use the last name, you know you're fucking in trouble. Yeah. Especially if your parents say it. Well, you your know? middle name. Right. That's yeah, what when I meant. You use your I middle meant name. Your, yeah, your, yeah. Your first and middle. D David Dominic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's I just got no in matter, trouble. <laughs> no matter how old you are, hearing that you're just like, Ugh! like your sphincter just like. Ugh! Like goes so up in there. it's interesting too, because back to the episode for a second, the, um, when Justin turns the guinea pigs into people, mm -hmm. it's like, what are they going to do? Ask them. These guinea pigs have nothing to do with it. No, no. Yeah. I know it leads into them smelling, you know, the disgusting yeah, stuff them. that's underneath Max's bed. And for whatever <laughs> reason, fucking Teresa and I, because we're now guinea pigs and not us anymore. <laughs> How I do you found, really feel about this episode? This was, your, ah! this was your favorite episode, huh? But then, but then they, they do. <laughs> you love the gacting. <laughs> the guinea pig acting. The gacting. They, they. <laughs> Solve the problem of is the where yeah. the parent guinea pigs are where they're underneath the bed because they smell it. Yeah, right? I also feel like whenever we would have an episode, I find it really funny that like we would just focus, which I mean I guess makes sense. Like when you're like learning a new language, you focus on like one turn of phrase and you use it until you're comfortable. But I love that it was like one spell or maybe two tops, like three spells a week. And then we didn't use any other spell that week. Right. Like of all the stuff that they could have done to like the spells that we've used in the first season, the fact that they just were like, we have to use this one spell to find our way through this yeah. is interesting. Well, when we get into season three and four, I'm curious if they brought back any of those. I feel like they did. Yeah. Um, I feel like there were some spells they used more than others, but. Did you remember seeing the guinea pigs be turned back into guinea pigs? No. Because that would have been fucking funny. I mean, they got, obviously they went the way of, the dragon dog that they just disappeared. <laughs> but wouldn't it be great? If they went those, to the land of dragons. Yeah, you just, you're, you know, you're out and about in another episode yeah. and you see the fucking guinea pigs out there going, Oh God. Oh, that, we got to change your back. But you know that makeup with our budget, they wouldn't have been able to just do like a cutaway of the I weird know, guinea pig people. Been, okay. Back to the episode. So now. Justin uses his power uh, and changes Jerry and Teresa back to their human form after getting lost in the mess of Max's room, which Max's room is, disgusting but like it was it, fun to see it yeah it was fun and i think it's like one of the only times we ever see it yeah like maybe we see it like one more time fans i know you'll jump in and be like it was actually in this episode but it was funny but like yeah it, yeah go ahead when selena said oh you've cleaned up a little bit we were able to open the door <laughs> That and was what funny. was it? What was the the marshmallow like asparagus or marsh, marshmallow? Marshmallow surprise, and he goes, "The asparagus is the surprise." Oh God! It was so yeah. like it was so nasty. And then someone sits on it or steps on it. Yeah, or something. something they, they get, like get yeah. all like the sticky like marshmallow. But my question is, why? Again, a very serious guinea pig question. Um, <laughs> my friends Denise and Matt. Uh, have a bunch of guinea pigs and they have they're, like they're a plethora funny. of clothes for them and stuff. It's so cute. It's really cute. That is cute. What Concerning, were you say? I interrupted but cute. You. Sorry. Um, no, <laughs> I was just going to say like, it, it's why of all places? Cause also too, I would imagine also, I love that we're getting so technical in the goddamn guinea pigs, but like, I would imagine your smell would be enhanced. So why would you go to the smelliest possible place you can I think, think the of? The idea was we, as guinea pigs, were like, "Oh, I just want to eat wherever the fuck." And now I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm smelling it. So we're we're, we're going to go. There. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that always, like every friend I ever had that had like a hamster or guinea pig, it, that always happened. Is they would always like <sighs> go upstairs, or they'd go behind the couch, or they'd go somewhere that you would just find them like a year later. <laughs> you reminded me, I had a hamster. Oh. His name was Willie. And, you know, I had the whole hamster, like, yeah. labyrinth in yeah. my room. And my mom was like, came in to give me a talking to. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going to cry. Uh, oh, no. I have no more crying, David. <laughs> no, you can And cry. my mom was like, you I think you Willie. need to spend more time with your hamster. And we opened it, and he was 
fucking day. I know. And then my mom picked him up and put him in his. Wait, how, when was the last time you checked on the hamster? I don't fucking know. I was a little kid. And then she was petting him when he oh. was dead. And then, oh, it was so sad. And then we put him in a box yeah. and we buried him in the backyard. I just want to, like, did you, were you just not feeding him? I don't know. I just was, a, I was like, I don't know. 10 or whatever. I was oh. like, I play with this and now I'm done. I mean, that's what happens. <laughs> no, you know? Willie, no. And gone. Oh, that makes me so sad. I had a rabbit named, which this was like the sturdiest fucking rabbit on the planet. It went back and forth in a Honda Civic to California. Like, Wait, it, Did you say sturdiest? Sturdy, yeah. Like, I mean, like, it takes a sturdy rabbit to survive. Because yeah, like, usually not... they get stressed out and they just like, you know, right? right. But. Um, but this rabbit, oh my God, went back and forth road trips to Texas and, Cal to, and back to California and all that stuff. Changed houses, like just the sturdiest fucking thing. Lived in tiny apartments, lived in houses, like just would adapt to anything. What color was it? What? It was, well, this is the weird kid. This is why I got made fun of when I was a kid, uh, among many reasons. Um, it was named Salem because I was- Obsessed with witches. I was obsessed with the Salem witch trial. <laughs> witch trials um oh, yeah sorry. and i think i was like 11 and so people were like that's the reason and also the monty python thing where the rabbit's like aggressive oh, learned best. that's very true yeah. that's very true i would put my hand in it and go ah, and like charge what, at it so and maybe i missed it, all black. What, oh black it was all black okay. um yeah all black salem um but yeah salem made it a long time i mean there was at one point i mean he made it like yeah, he lived a really long time. There was one point, like his arm, he was holding it weird. We took it to the vet and his he had cancer that just entirely Aww, eroded his shoulder. Come on. Lived another three years. Ah, okay. I good. was like, shit, Salem. And then finally, like I was coming home one time and my mom was like, just want to let you know we found him. And he was like dead in his cage this morning. And so we buried him out the front. So I was just sad I couldn't hug him like one more time yeah, before he well, passed. But I'm sorry that. No, Salem I didn't mean to gone. turn this in. Well, I mean, this was like. Ages ago. I've got a rabbit story real quick. Please. My grandfather was a peasant, only spoke broken <laughs> English, and and they lived in Brooklyn, okay. and my dad had a pet rabbit. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm you know, uh, my, my grandfather was a garbage man, mm -hmm. you know, very simple. Um, I love that you called him and, a peasant, like he was in surf, like in serfdoms. Well, I mean, just, he just was simple. I never met okay, him. Okay, okay. He's a simple but man. My dad had this pet rabbit. Yeah. Can't remember what the name was, but you know, after a certain amount of time, my grandfather looked at it and was like, "Okay, it's, it's ready." <gasps> so then they had oh, rabbit stew. No, oh no, I yeah. hate that story. But I know, but that's like what happens. You you don't have oh, a lot. You you're don't fucking, have to. You don't if have you're to hungry, tell me. My, we're gonna eat the rabbit. My dad grew up with not a lot of money and on a farm, and like his dad was a mechanic, and um, yeah, there's some stories from his childhood and then also stories just that I've had going to the farm and stuff like that. Nature is metal, man. Yeah. Nature, like survival, like doing what you got to do. It's metal. So to all the youngins, take care of <laughs> take your Take care rabbits. of your willy. Wait, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> oh God, no. Take oh care of your God, hamster. Oh my God, Take care Calm of your hamster. Down. It's been a minute. My brain lives there. Leave me alone. Wait, okay. What, what else happened in this episode? Uh, well, that's what I'm getting to. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, Justin uses his powers. He changes Jerry and Teresa back. I think I already said that. Professor Crumbs poofs into Mag Max's room. I have no better word for that. He poofs yeah. in there. Uh, shocked by how much trouble Alex has caused, decides to permanently strip Alex of her powers with his Spencer's gifts yes. ball. Um, Justin panics and turns Crumbs into a guinea pig, revealing that cleaning up after Alex actually makes him a better wizard. And I love, I love Teresa's line when she comes in and she goes, well, I'm not a wizard, so what do you guys want from that? <laughs> that was I a love great that line. Maria killed it. That one, that one made me laugh so. And that hard. was almost a drive-by. And a drive-by is you're not really in the scene. You have one, you know, joke kind of do yeah, that. Yeah. And as you're leaving or as you're passing by, mm -hmm. you just kind of drop the joke and then go. But that was the good kind of zinga. You no, know no, what I mean? No, was that great. was the good kind of like <clears throat> just not say anything, I, come in, annihilate, and get out. Yeah, like, really, it's so good. I laughed out loud at that Yeah, it was, was a good, really it was funny. a really good line, and she just, like, precision execution And on also, character-wise, going back to uh, David turning crumbs into... Uh, yeah, because he's a, such a, a rule follower. Yeah, but he was doing that for his sister. 
He yeah. was he was there. That was a little a little thing where yeah. even though in the beginning of the episode he's like, "Man, I'm gonna win the competition. Man, I'm better than you." Um, he didn't sound exactly like that. But then <laughs> at the end, he he did something for her, yeah. which was which was interesting but and nice. That's something to me that I loved about like the family dynamic on the show. Is I feel like family in life is just these weird group of people that like God or whatever higher power you want to believe in throws you together with, right? Like a lot of times family, you would never pick those people. But I think a lot of times, like, cause I'm, I'm, I believe in, in, in God and, and you know, something bigger than ourselves. Right. Yeah. So I believe that whatever that is that you want to believe in for me, it's God, but like that they put you with those people so that you can learn how to be a more well-rounded version of yourself and yeah. tolerate people that you wouldn't normally spend time and energy on. Um, and I think, that's what's so beautiful about like Alex and Justin is you see her chill him out and allow him to know when is like learn the rules and then learn like that's the way you can break them better. Right. And then he he teaches her to be a better wizard and be a more responsible human being and like they just balance each other yeah, out really yeah. nicely. I, I I will say I, I don't typically say God. I usually say universe. Well, that's why me. I say like yeah. like I said for me I say God, but I know other people. And I think don't we're all connected and all that stuff. But I will say that I have learned. Again, I'm 51, but and he just had a stroke. It's okay. It's okay. It, I I will say that it even if your family, even if your blood, you do not have to pursue a relationship. Yeah, and and the reason I say that is because there's certain people in my family where I have tried uh, to, to be there and and all that, and I'm always open to yeah. to having that. But if you're brother or your mom or your dad or your sister or your kids or whatever that is if they're being mean to you there's no reason to continue in my opinion yeah, that I relationship agree. I agree. And, and you know yeah of course you go through if you can do therapy you can do communication you can do whatever you can but if they're not nice to you i say it's okay to say Absolutely. even though you're you have the same blood like i'm gonna go surround myself with fucking people that are nice to I, me there's always a difference between like your blood family and your chosen family yeah right i think chosen family is especially as you get older is something that's so imperative to just being the best version of yourself and to me that's the parameter that i like balance all my relationships on whether they're platonic romantic whatever is like am i a better version of myself with mm -hmm. this person or worse yeah do they lessen me do they make me small or do they build me up and i can do the same for them and there's people in my family too where like i wish we had a better relationship and i've done what i can but eventually you do have to like you were talking about get to a place where you just accept that like i can't do the 100 percent here it's a 50 50 thing mm -hmm. i can't do all the work and if the other person's not willing to meet me halfway i don't have anything for that and right. if they make you feel like shit or if they make you feel like a lesser version of themselves or they bring out the worst in you don't never make space for people like that in your life no matter if they're family or not right or you know? friends you've known for 27 years yeah and that's and something you know who you are uh-uh <laughs> Um, ah, oh, I have one yeah. thing I want to say. Please. I saw something on the TT, which means TikTok for those people who don't know. <laughs> which always um, makes me think like you're taking a little tinkle. A tinkle. A pee pee. A little TT. T -t. There was a woman who said, listen, imagine that you're, um, you've had a goal your whole life and it's yeah. the biggest goal and you want to achieve it and, and you've achieved this goal and you feel amazing and all of that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you've gotten, you've six and you just feel, you know, 10 feet tall. Mm-hmm. What if we just feel that now? What if that 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 goal? What if that thing? Yeah. You're just it's in you now, and see what uh, uh, the energy, the universe that brings to you. If you're in that vibration, if you're in that place, or whatever it is. And I watched that, and it really resonated with me yeah. because I feel like I'm in that. Like I'm I'm doing things. I'm doing with a SAG interim agreement. I've done a couple of movies. We're doing the podcast. I'm yeah. opening a cafe. I, I'm writing a script. Yeah, you're this you're so proactive in like what you're creating in the world. I'm which doing is it because really I, I enjoy it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm having fun. I, I had lunch with my uh cousins, uh, Doug and Arlene, and Doug goes, trickle flood flow. Trickle flood flow. So you get a little bit of this, you do oh, a little yeah. bit of that, and then it comes in and then flood and then you're you're doing it. You're flowing. Well, you know? some of my favorite artists are ones that are never like blocked by like one parameter, right? Where they 
they're photographers, they're writers, they're singers, they're actors. They're like, they do all of these things. And I used to think of it when I was younger as a jack of all trades, expert of none kind of situation. But now I see it of like, you're just exploring different facets of yourself, different facets of the world, different facets of just other experiences. You're just making yourself more, there's so much to experience in life that you should just need to grab onto every piece that you can and, and experience you're a, it. a perfect example of that, Jen, because you're an actress, yeah. you're a podcaster. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> yeah. very, uh, um, you're showing everybody, but the fact that you went to nursing school and that you're a nurse now is fucking amazing. Thank you. Because you know what? Like, that gives everybody like, hey, I don't care how old you are or what is going mm -hmm. on. You can always go, a, uh, you can go many different paths. It's very you true. Know? And it was interesting. I saw something else on the uh, On the, the TTs? Gram. No, on the gram. Oh, on the gram. And You're so much cooler than me, David. <laughs> You're so much cooler on the TTs and the gram. Somebody was saying like, it, it was a woman talking about all these very successful people mm -hmm. that didn't become successful until later in life. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, oh, J.K. Rowling was a single mom living on welfare and then boom, you know, at 40 or whatever, she writes these books and, yeah. and you know, um, Harry Potter is the one. I'm kidding. So, Which the show might have something to do with. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, oh, oh, Samuel Jackson oh, Samuel is the Jackson. one who got a part when he was like There's, 50 I mean, the, the and list, then started working. The list is yeah. endless. Like Leslie Jones talks about how like she wasn't, I, I, it was either 40 or 50 that she, I think it was in her 40s that she started to find stand-up comedy, get on SNL. Um, my mom brought up uh, to to me for no reason at all um, the uh, Henry Winkler because she was like he was so known as Fonzie and then yeah. disappeared and went other things did other things for like ten years and then finally got to get back to acting yeah and producing so, and doing a lot of stuff and I met him yeah. when my dad he produced uh, the, the new Hollywood being. Squares yeah. when my dad did he was the center square with Burt Reynolds it's really yeah. funny um, and Henry Winkler is kind of like a little bit of a he's not a Fonzie in real life you yeah. know what I mean he's a little more introverted and, and relaxed but I think he's more like the character that he's on on Barry Barry oh my it's such fucking god a good show. you haven't watched that show everybody it's so that's good. a good binge and it's yeah. so funny the last season gets a little um oh what's the word I'm looking for it gets a little abstract yeah it's still good it's still good don't get me wrong but like it just it, it's so like precise and together and creative. And then I think like Bill Hader started to really feel his oats of like what he could play with and do in the last season. So he got, like I said, just abstract. It's just a different style. Yeah, it was, it did change. It yeah. did change, but a great show. No, so, funny. so good. Um, what, did okay. something else happen on this episode? Yeah, okay, we're wrapping up. I mean, come on guys, you know what you're getting into. We talk about the episode and then we get massively distracted. And you know what? I so, just want to talk to the fans for one second okay. and say thank you Should I guys. leave? Should I go? Thank you. No, stop it. <laughs> I just really appreciate everybody's yeah. enthusiasm and it, it just is, it's so nice to have people enjoy what we're what we're doing and yeah. going over this and it's it's really fun for us and it's also just so nice to to have everybody you know be excited about about no, the, I, the, you know I agree it, it's so nice too cuz it's like when you're out and people are like oh my god I love the show oh my god in the podcast they yeah. get really excited it's it's so it's so just lovely you know it's really sweet and and you know you spend a lot of time and energy doing something and you have fun with it, but you, when you can make other people happy and ha make them have fun with you, yeah, um, it's a beautiful thing. Especially people that you never get the chance to meet, you know, because there's. But yeah, like it's just a beautiful thing. There's a whole nother generation, yeah, out there. It's wild, and you know, we have the older generation that grew up with us, mm -hmm. and we have their parents, yeah, <laughs> and then we have the new generation. I have, I have people like I, I've had a few moms come up to me. Um, where they're like, I named my daughter Harper because of you. And I'm oh, just- fuck, really? It's, yes. That's it's so great. cool. It's so cool, but just like mind blowing. You know what I mean? Just so bizarre. Um, I had I had one of, because we have some travel nurses. We have like a mix of like new nurses, travel nurses at my hospital. And um, there was this really sweet travel nurse. And he was like, has anyone ever told you? And I get this all the time, which I get, because it's weird that, that I'm in that environment. You look like Jennifer Stone. Uh-huh, yeah. And, I was, and sometimes I go with it and sometimes I don't. But I was like- yeah, I, 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 I do get that. And then I was like, do I tell them? Do I? Yeah. And then I just was like, because I said, yeah, I get that all the time because that's 
It's me. And he was like, what? No. So like at the end of a 12 hour shift, you can make somebody happy when they've had, you know, all sorts of stuff. It's it's a nice gift to be given. Yulia and I went for our anniversary to Palm Springs to an amazing, wonderful hotel. It was amazing. It was great. We're exhausted from doing the cafe. So now it was 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 nice to, to relax. Yeah. I happened to run into Jonathan Silverman there. I just dropped the mic. I don't know who um, that is. You don't know who John is? What the f- Weekend at Bernie's? Oh, okay. Yeah. I wouldn't have geeked out. I mean, it's a funny movie, but no, like, I, I wouldn't worked, have geeked out. I worked with him. It was really fun. But what I'm saying is we were driving back to uh, uh, Pine Mountain, and I stopped. we stopped at McDonald's to pee, and also I got some fries. To TT? To TT. And then <laughs> there was a, 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 a fan who worked there, and she was mm. so sweet. And then I, she said, I was listening to the podcast on the way into work today. And I was like, cool. So we, we made a little uh, video for the Instagram and it just is, yeah. it just feels good. Now I'm going to say to everybody. And then we're going to wrap you, up the episode. Okay. But if you <laughs> see the, me yeah. out in the world, come up and say hi and we'll take a picture and whatever. Yeah, I love that. Don't be shy. Yeah. David, David and I, like we, we love, you know, talking to the fans. We love just hearing what you love about it and just meeting new people and so it's yeah never be shy we're not yeah but don't spend more than 15 seconds with me because that's no but the the interesting thing and or don't ask me to do a tt at the hospital (laughs) because i can't everybody asked me to (laughs) do people got mad at me they're like you oh you don't you know like you don't love your fans because you don't want to do tiktok i'm like i'm at work no 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 yeah you're at work it's 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 a different situation it just makes me laugh but i i um uh, all of the fans want me to go, you there, it's Alex, you know, but. Well, hello, me in the freaking hat song. Right. Which I can do. I, I know I, I can. I believe you. I, uh, back to the beginning of the episode, just for a second. <laughs> we said, you know, like I, I do go up to people. If yeah. I see someone, I will just say, I don't need a photo. I mean, if it's fucking Nicholas Cage, I'm taking a photo. Well, but, I mean, you're getting in bed with him if it's Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so. I will say, I love your work. It's made yeah. me feel good. Yeah. You know, thank you so much. And then I'm on my way, you know. Jen. Okay. Stone. No, no, no. We're not oh, done. Oh, we have more, we're everybody. We're not done. Because remember 30 minutes ago, we were literally like, what's, is there anything left in the episode? There is. So Justin turns Crumbs back into a human. Crumbs heard what Justin said about Alex with his guinea pig ears and is moved by Justin's loyalty to his younger sister. And seeing that Alex has learned her lesson, Crumbs gives Alex back her powers so she can train alongside her brother with the punishment of grooming Crumbs' beard for two weeks. And Max is upset they went that they went from having four guinea pigs to no guinea pigs. Yes. And that's I, it. It's end and of end of episode. David's favorite guinea pig episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting too that Max got a C and Alex failed. You know what I mean? Like but she the, turned it the into thing. a brick. She wasn't even close. I wanna say goodbye to you. I just want to say before we go, I totally wore this Pink Floyd shirt because of you. I love Pink Floyd. I know you do, that's why I wore it. I've All seen right. Roger Waters play a few times. What? It's, it's very hard for me to um, go to a concert because I just, yeah. you know. It's, it's a lot of stimulus. Around. Yeah, but I, I was willing to, I'm not willing, but I went to yeah. to his concerts and it's so much fun. I mean, I... There's not a lot of music that I know the words to. Yeah. But I know all the words to it's, the It's a Pink weird Floyd. like recess of your brain that holds on to lyrics like that. But yeah. anyway, we could, I mean, I'm not going to open and that I digress. door. digress. I'm not going to open that door because I could talk about music forever. Jen so, Stone, here's to you. Here's to you too, boo Love you. I and love I you can't too. wait to see you soon. I know. And we love you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay, play the outro music. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod. If you want to watch clips from the show, you can check out the Wizards Pod Clips YouTube channel, and the link is in the description. And if you just can't get enough Wizards, join our Patreon for exclusive bonus content. The link is in the description for that as well.